The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. When people write letters praising the commercials on a radio program, that's news. Well, it's happened scores of times to the Equitable Life Assurance Society. People say the commercials on this Equitable Society program are packed with helpful information. Give them an entirely new slant on life insurance. Tonight's Equitable commercial is no exception. Tonight, in just 14 minutes, you're going to hear about a type of insurance that's important to 50 million Americans, most of whom know practically nothing about it. Be sure to listen carefully to this message on group insurance from the Equitable Life Assurance Society. Tonight's FBI file, The Trail of Terror. In the early days of the nation... The West was considered to be the gathering place for every lawbreaker who was evading the police of his native state. It is true that in those days there were whole cities made up of fugitive criminals. Bad men rode the plains and committed untold havoc among the early pioneer settlers. Life was rugged, and the only, only the very strongest were able to survive. But today, things are different. Today, in every western state, you find evidence that life is not much different than it is in the east. For people are basically the same wherever they live. Most of them are decent, law-abiding citizens. But some, well, some of them are throwbacks to the old west. The west that grew up to the constant noise of gunfire. The old west, where few men met death naturally. Tonight's file opens on a lonely, gutted road winding through the flatlands of one of our western states. It is early evening as Clint and Charlotte Williams drive their ancient jalopy along the road toward their new home. Clint. Yeah, honey? Look at that sky. Yeah. That's really a sunset. It's so beautiful. Uh Uh-huh. And with no Empire State Building getting in the way. Clint, you miss New York? I should say not. The only thing I missed was you. I know that feeling. I'm glad I come out here ahead of you, though. There was a lot of work to do around the place. And now it's ready for us. I don't know how you ever got a long way out here by yourself. Oh, it wasn't too bad. Anytime I got stuck, I went back to my Boy Scout handbook and found the answer. (laughs) Oh, that's the truth. In the first week, I practically lived out of that handbook. (laughs) Well, baby, it's just about time for you to close your eyes. We're coming close? Just over this little hill. Okay, they're closed. One thing now, Charlotte. I don't want you to be expecting too much. It's still just a shack, you know. It won't compare with some... Please be quiet. Let me form my own opinion. Okay. Let's have that opinion. Glenn, it's lovely. You, you like it, honey? Oh, it's wonderful. Hey, is that our dog? Uh-huh. His name is Slack. He came with a place. Well, isn't he a nice fella? Okay, Slack. Hey, down, boy, down. That's a fella. Hey, get down. Please, this is everything I hoped it would be. It's different from Washington Heights, huh? Oh, gee, yes. You know something funny? When I was a kid on the west side, I was all the time nuts for playing cowboy. Now look at me. Boots. Blue jeans, ten-gallon hat. I'm the real McCoy. So is everything around here. Clint, let's go inside, huh? Sure, baby. Hey, you want to slide out on this side? Uh-huh. That's it. Thank you, partner. <laughs> You're mighty welcome, ma'am. <laughs> hey, have you got any cows on this ranch? Sure. That's him. Oh. Over there in a the barn. <laughs> oh, Clint. Yeah, wait a minute. I'll get out my key. You don't need a key. The door's open. Now, that's funny. I thought I locked it. Well, honey, we just walk right in. Go ahead. Okay. Well, 
Well, how do you like it? Hey. What's the matter, dear? I didn't leave those dirty dishes there. I didn't open those cans. Are you sure? Well, of course. I spent all day yesterday cleaning this place up before I went in for you. Hey, Charlotte, somebody must have broken in. Oh. Wait here. I'm going to look in the bedroom. Oh, wait, Clint. No, no, you stay right there. Well? Nobody in there. The bed was slept in, though. Huh? Somebody broke in and stayed here last night. Some more coffee, Clint? No, thanks, baby. Oh, brother, what a dinner. Did you have enough? Did I have enough? Three helpings of everything. I'm up to here. Well, I think I'll do the dishes. No, no, sit down and relax. We got all night. Well, I'd rather do them. What's that? Coyote. They're, they're kind of dangerous, aren't they? No, they stay up in the hills. They don't bother anybody. Do they yell like that much? Well, they... Look, baby, I'll tell you what. Let's turn on a radio and get a little music, huh? I don't mind their yelling. Look, what with the house being broken into and all that, you've had enough things to make you jumpy. Yeah, this will make you feel like you're right back at Washington Heights. Clint, I, I don't want you to think I'm a sissy. Oh, stop that kind of talk. Yeah. How's that, huh? No. Hey, did I ever show you this picture of me? My mother mailed it out to me last week. It's awful cute. That's when I was uh, one of the Eagle Scouts at a Daniel Boone troop. We used to all the time go on hikes. New York? Sure, Van Cortland Park. Way over to Jersey, to the Palisades. You know something? I never got lost once. Oh? Yes, yeah, I was the best trail marker in the troops. We interrupt this program to broadcast a warning. Three men held up the Maywood Bank on Tuesday afternoon. One of the bandits has been captured. But the other two, who are armed, are still at large in this vicinity. All roads have been blocked off. And... Oh, that's enough of that. Clint, do you suppose they're the same ones? What do you mean? The ones who broke into this house. Of course not. But the man said they were in this neighborhood. Baby, this is the wide open spaces. Why, this neighborhood is hundreds of miles. What's that? It's the dog, Slack. Well, what's he barking for? I don't know, but I'm going to find out. Wait, I'm coming with you. You're not going out there alone. Do you need a light? Not with this moon. He stopped barking. Yeah. Where is he? I don't know. Flat! Flat! Here, boy! Maybe he chased something. Maybe he ran up. Oh, it's Glenn! What is it? Look here. Oh. He's dead. Isn't he, Glenn? Yeah. Somebody hit him with a club. Meanwhile, in the nearby city of Grantsville, FBI Special Agent Taylor has just entered the office of Sheriff Nash. Sheriff, I'm out here looking for the man who held up the bank at Maywood three days ago. Oh, yes. I've just been handed a report on that. You see, I've been up at the state capitol on business all week. Well, then let me give you a personal report on it. Well, go right ahead. Well, it was a three-man job. They pulled it in broad daylight. Now, how much did they get? About $16,000. A lot of money. The sheriff at Maywood was in the bank at the time of the robbery. He wounded one of the bandits, but they made their getaway in two cars. Uh -huh. Now, one car ran out of gas about, oh, 30 miles down the road from here at the B. Bar H. Ranch. Well, that's Tom Jenkins' place. Yes, that's it. Well, the two bandits in that car slugged one of Mr. Jenkins' hired hands, stole two horses, and rode off. And leave any trail? No, no, none at all. Well, what happened to the other fellow? Oh, he was the one who was wounded. I guess he couldn't keep going with that wound because he drove his car off into a ditch. Oh, where? About five miles down the road. Uh -huh. My guess is that this is where he was going to rendezvous with his partners. Well, what happened to him? One of your men is uh, with him over at the hospital now. They picked him up. <laughs> you can see I just got back. I don't know what's going on in my own office. I understand, Sheriff. Oh, uh, here's a description of the other two robbers. I wish you'd post some notices on them. You bet I will. You got anything else on either of them? Well, I got some prints on one of them from the car they abandoned. I've already sent them on to our identification division down in Washington. Good. Well, I'll have these wanted notices made up at once. Randy? Huh? 
Huh? It's me, Les. Oh. I thought I told you to stay in the house. Well, I just came out to shoot a couple of rabbits. You can't go rabbit shooting this time of night. I come out early. Why didn't you go back? I did. When I got back, there were people in the house. A man and a girl. Who are they? I don't know. They see you? No. But that dog of theirs jumped me. What'd you do? I killed him. Oh. How did you make out in town? Did you see Foster? No, he never showed. I waited at the saloon as long as I could. Yeah. You think he might have got picked up? I don't know. He was hurt bad from that shot. Maybe he's dead. Hmm. What do we do now? Nothing. Just keep moving. Where's your horse? Oh, uh, right over there, back of that barn. Okay, go get him. Let's get out of here. Oh, we can't go. Why not? We've got to go back to the house first. What do you want to go back there for? The money from the bank job is still in the bedroom. <laughs> Did you find out anything in town? Yeah, I sure wish we'd gotten these wanted notices out a little sooner. Oh, why? One of these fellas was in the Parker House Saloon all afternoon. Well, we must have been right then about Grantville being the place they were going to use for a rendezvous. Yes. When he left, he told the bartender that if his friend showed up, to tell him he couldn't wait. He gave the bartender a description of his friend. Oh, have you got it? Yeah. It's that fella Foster we got in the hospital. Mm-hmm. Did he uh, tell the bartender anything else? No, just said he couldn't wait, went out, got on his horse and rode away. Well, if he's traveling by horse, he couldn't have gotten very far. Uh, uh, excuse me. But, uh... Sheriff Nash. Yes, yes, he's here. Just a minute. For you, Taylor. Oh, thanks. Special Agent Taylor. Oh, hello, Fred. You have? Fine, go ahead. Andy Morton. Hmm? Hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Fred, thanks very much. I'll be in touch with the office as soon as I get anything. Bye. What that, was that was our office, Sheriff. They've gotten an answer from Washington on the prints out of the single fingerprint file. The prints belong to a thief named Randy Morton. Well, I've heard of him. Oh, he's got a long record. Uh, he usually works with his brother, Les. Uh, that might help. Knowing who we're looking for. Sheriff, both Morton and his brother are known killers. You'd better warn all of your men to keep their guns handy. I'll do that. Well, what should we do next? Well, if you've got enough men, why don't you fan out and try to cover the neighborhood? We know they're around here someplace. Okay. Where are you going? I'm going over to the hospital and check on whether or not I can talk to the wounded bandit. That's the house right up there. Yeah, I know. I'll see if the horse is here. Okay. <coughs> What is that bag, mister? It's a gun I got here. Please. Quiet, lady. Hey, you Keep stay those hands up. Me. All right, frisk him, Les. Right. Clint, who are these men? I don't know. He ain't carrying nothing. What are you doing here? We left a package. Where is it, Les? Under the mattress in that room. See if it's still there. What were you doing in this house? We slept here last night. You the ones who killed my dog? You asked too many questions. Clint, I know who they are. They're the ones the radio was telling about. They held up that bank. That's right. You'll never get away with this. Every road is blocked off. The radio said so. I got the money. You hear that, Les? What? She says every road is blocked off. She claims we'll never get through. No? Shall I tie him up? No. They're going to help us. Hmm? Oh. They got a car. They're going to drive us through that roadblock. I won't do it. Shut up! All right, now listen to me, both of you. Do you want to drive us through the roadblock and live? Or do we kill both of you right here? Well, come on. Answer him. We'll drive you through. We will return in just a moment to tonight's case from the files of your FBI. Now, a 50-second interview on group insurance with a young mother from Gary, Indiana. Mrs. Morris... 
keeping house and taking care of those three youngsters must keep you pretty busy these days. Certainly does, Mr. Keating. It's a full-time job. So believe me, I'm mighty glad I didn't have to go back to my old position when my husband passed on last year. Oh, your husband had enough life insurance so you can afford to stay home? Well, we could only afford a little. What made the big difference was group insurance for the Equitable Society. That changed the picture, did it? Oh, yes. It's being paid at the rate of $50 every month. And those $50 checks will go on until my youngest child is 16 years old. So with the group insurance, plus what I get from Social Security, my children have a full-time mother. Yes, group insurance with the Equitable Society was a mighty good thing for you, Mrs. Morris. And it's just as good for your husband's company. For three good reasons. First, it means satisfied, loyal workers. Think of getting life insurance, accident and sickness insurance, and retirement income, plus hospital, surgical, and medical benefits, all in one package from the Equitable Society. And no medical examination either. Second, group insurance with the Equitable Life Assurance Society decreases labor turnover. My husband said a man thinks twice before he walks out on a job which gives him extra insurance coverage at far lower cost than he could buy it on his own. Third, Equitable Society group insurance improves quality and quantity of production. Getting rid of all those worries about sickness and accidents just naturally helps anyone do better work. Well, I hope every employer in this radio audience hears what you said and that every one of them is resolving now to get the facts on complete group insurance protection from an Equitable Society expert. Get in touch with the nearest office of the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. Or write direct to the New York Home Office of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now back to the FBI file... The Trail of Terror. It is a general rule that criminals have no compassion. Because by the very nature of their illegal deeds, they declare themselves to be outcasts and not regular members of any society. They feel that they owe nothing to anyone, but that the world in general owes them a living, a living which they mean to take in any way they can. And so their treatment of fellow human beings who happen to get in their way, treatment which shocks and outrages every decent citizen, is a part of the criminal's regular pattern of behavior. Life to him is cheap, another person's life, that is. And he'll allow no such weakness as a qualm of conscience to stand between him and the one thing he values, his freedom. Tonight's file continues as Special Agent Jim Taylor arrives in front of the young couple's home to meet Sheriff Nash. Hello, Sheriff. One of your men called me at the hospital and said that you found the two horses that were stolen down at the B Bar H Ranch. That's right. Found them tied up right up the hill. Huh? Yes, you get work. anything over at the hospital? No, Foster died a couple of minutes after I got there. Oh, too bad. He might have helped us. Whose house is that, Sheriff? And a young fellow named Williams came out from New York about a month ago. Oh, what do you know about him? Not much. He was in the Army, bought this place, one of those government loans. I see. He uh, live alone? No, no. I understand his wife came out from New York just today. Mm-hmm. Did Williams have a car? Yeah, but it's gone. Have you got any description of it? Yes, one of my deputies gave me one. I'm going to send it out. Good. Let's hope they haven't gotten through the roadblock as yet. We've got a double block set. Fine. While you're sending out that alarm, I think I'll go inside and take a look around the house. (laughs) Try to stop crying, baby. We'll get out of it, okay? Let's have a little less noise up front. Can I even talk to her? You just wait a minute. What? Them lights up there on the road must be a roadblock. Slow down, kid. Oh, thank heaven. This ain't doing you any good, lady. You're gonna duck under these blankets back here. And I don't need to tell you, you two better give the man the right answers. Baby, we gotta do like he says. Evening. We're looking for a pair of men on horseback. You seen anything of them? No, sir. How far have you been riding? Oh, just this side of Grantville. That's where they were earlier tonight. You been on the highway right along? Yes, sir. Well, I don't think they could have got past here. But if you see anything of two men on horseback, you just go to the nearest phone and call the sheriff. 
Yes, sir. I'll, I'll do that. All right. Go ahead. Nice work, kid. Where do we go now? There's a fork in the road up ahead. Turn to the left. When are you letting us go? I ain't made up my mind about that yet. That you, Sheriff? Yes, and I got bad news. Oh, what's that? We sent out that alarm a little too late. They got through the first block? Ten minutes ago. Too bad we didn't find those horses a little earlier. You find anything in here? Yes. William's wife did arrive just tonight. Her bags are in the bedroom, still unpacked. Oh, I spoke to that deputy of mine who knew the Williams boy. And? He don't think Williams was working with the Mortons. I know they weren't. Here. Look at this picture of Williams as a youngster. No one about it. Well, that's a Boy Scout uniform he's wearing. And he left these three matches on top of the picture. What does that mean? Well, three of anything is a Boy Scout signal of danger. You see, I used to be a scout myself. Well, if they ain't working with the Mortons, those youngsters are in real danger. Mortons would just soon kill him as none. How far is that second roadblock from the first? We're not very far. And have you notified them that the Mortons are in a car and not on horseback? Well, one of my men is doing that over the radio in my car now. Good. Now, if they got through the first block, then they must be traveling on the highway. That's right. Is there any pass we could cut through and maybe head them off? Yeah, yeah, there is. Cold Rock Canyon cuts right down to the pa- highway there. I think we'd better make a try at it that way, then. Come on, Sheriff, let's go. <laughs> This road ain't as smooth as the highway, but it'll get us here quicker. Well, that's all we're looking for right now. We'll pick up about half an hour going this way. It might be enough to save a couple of lives. I sure hope so. Newton to car number one. Well, that's us. Go ahead, Newton. More bad news, Sheriff. The Williams car got through the second roadblock. How'd that happen? There was a girl driving the car, and Harrison was looking for three men. After they got past, he got the second alarm, but they were gone. All right. We're headed down toward the highway now. They keep going, we'll head right into them. We'll be in touch with you later. How do you feel, Charlotte? I'm okay. I'll see if they'll let me drive again. Just stay where you are. But, gee... We ain't going much further. We're stopping at the next crossroads. Well, what are we stopping for, Randy? This car's getting too hot. You mean we start walking? No, there's a place down here by Water Tower where every train stops. Yeah? There's one due to stop in about a half an hour. It'll pick up water and then go to Chicago. We're going to be on it. There's a crossroad up ahead. Yeah, slow down. Uh, what are we going to do with them? I don't know yet. You can't let them go. They'll run to the cops. We ain't going to let them go. When we leave the car, we'll take care of them. Sheriff, there's the highway now, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's it. Here we are. Sheriff, look. There's a car parked over there. It looks like the Williams Come car. Come on, let's take a look. It is the Williams car. They're in it. Are they dead? No. No, they're still breathing. Oh, good. They're both unconscious. What do you suppose made the Mortons get out here? I don't know. Come on, let's see if we can find any trail. It's pretty dark to be looking for footprints. Motor's still hot. That means they must have been here not more than a couple of minutes ago. We couldn't have missed them by more than that. I think. Wait a minute, Sheriff. Come here. Flash your light on the front window of the car there, will you? Mm -hmm. That one? That's it. Didn't your deputy report that Mrs. Williams was driving when they went through that second roadblock? That's right. That means that Williams was sitting in this right hand seat. Well, I guess so. Why? Look what's drawn in the dust on that window. A long vertical line with short cross lines and a heart upside down. Yeah. Sheriff, radio your deputies to pick up these youngsters and get them to a doctor. I think I know where we can find the Morton brothers. When is that train coming in, Randy? Should have been here by now. Must be running late. Well, maybe we should have... Wait a minute. Yeah. There she comes now. Hmm. You think it'll stop? Sure. It's got to have water, don't it? Does it? 
Look, Les, I've run things pretty good so far, haven't I? Not good enough, Morton. Huh? Throw those hands up. Go on, both of you. Who are you, a railroad cop? Oh. I'm from the FBI. What? All right, Sheriff. Throw the cuffs on them. It'll be a downright pleasure. Then let's get back to town. Pretty late for an old Boy Scout like me to be up. Randy Morton and his brother Les were tried and convicted in a federal court on the charge of bank robbery. They were sentenced to serve 20 years in a federal prison. And so, because a special agent of your FBI remembered his old boy scout signals, two dangerous bank robbers were caught. Clint Williams, riding beside his wife, had written two signals into the dust on the window of his car. Special Agent Taylor put those two together and went directly to the water tower by the railroad track, with the results you have already witnessed. After the conviction of the two Morton brothers, the Williams were given a reward for their part in the capture and your FBI was able to stamp a familiar word on still another file. The word, closed. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. Now, some more useful facts on Equitable Society Group Insurance. It's a bargain for workers because it enables the company to give its employees the benefit of its wholesale purchasing power. It's a bargain for the management because it builds loyalty and goodwill, decreases personnel turnover, improves quality and quantity of production. No wonder Mr. S.C. Allen, president of the National Cash Register Company, says, group protection is a mutual undertaking with mutual benefits. As such... This company has and will continue to profit from its share in this outstanding welfare plan. If your company does not have group insurance, or if your group program is incomplete, get in touch immediately with the nearest office of the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week... This is your FBI will dramatize another case from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. A case involving America's number one crime problem. Its subject, juvenile delinquency. Its title, The Indifferent Mother. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. The author was Jerry Lewis, your narrator was Dean Carlton, and Special Agent Taylor was played by Stacey Harris. This is your FBI is a Jerry Devine production. This is Larry Keating speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. And inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Indifferent Mother on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.